Hello! So today we're taking a look at the CIA Marchetti SF-260 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's an Italian military trainer from the 1970s and it's been developed by Sim Skunk Works, the same people that built the Starfighter or F-104 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you can see, looking around it outside, the material modelling on it is absolutely something else. In fact, the, the modelling of the entire aeroplane is really, really very, very good indeed. So, having had a look around outside, I mean, we become blasé about this, don't we? Because the aeroplanes are always, or most aeroplanes, are looking fantastic these days in the simulator. But, um, let's go and jump inside and have a look inside as well. So, yep, you will see the insides are just as good it's actually quite remarkable just how good it does look it's almost photorealistic throughout even down to like carpet textures it's just stunning really and the wear and tear is modeled wonderfully so it's not a standard six pack instrument layout and you will see that we're sat on the right side of the cockpit which is a bit of a departure from what you might have been used to in the simulator so it's common with military trainers that the pilot sits on the right or the, the student pilot even sits on the right and the trainer on the left. So what, are we, what have we actually got in terms of layout then? So we've got an altimeter, we've got vertical speed, we've got an HSI, got uh, attitude indicator, indicated airspeed, you've got a G meter front and center at the top, you've got manifold pressure and RPM, you've got the usual um, wing fuel tip fuel tanks, oil pressure, cylinder head temperature, oil temperature and a uh, ammeter or load meter in this case. Um, there are some plungers you can push and pull, so there's um, a defrost button, there's a cabin vent button, there's also an engine anti-ice, that's the yellow one there. Um, we've got pretty good control of mixtures, so I don't know why the mixture was all the way forwards, because my lever wasn't. Uh, you've got flap lever over there, parking brake, uh, you've got nav light control, strobe lights, uh, pitot heat, the breakers don't work. You've got a basic set of radios over here. Unfortunately, the labels jitter, and I'm not sure what causes that, whether it's something I've done or it's something in the air aircraft, but it is a 1.0 aircraft, so we're not going to be too hard on it. Obviously, you've got a mirror of some of the flight instruments over on the, the co-pilot side. So you can see behind us, we've got various bits of hardware, like batteries and things. It's really nicely put together, I have to say. Okay. Should we go and take it up for a flight and see how we get on? So we'll put the mixture forwards. We'll put the propeller RPM all the way forwards. We'll crack the throttle open. The fuel valve is already open at the bottom. It is when you get in the aircraft. The Also, the fuel selector is on both wings, both tip tanks. Um, just having a look around. I don't think we need the boost pump to start. We'll soon find out. So we'll go and turn the battery on, we'll turn the alternator on, we'll, and we'll turn the engine over, shall we? So we've already cracked the throttle open, yeah, we've already done that. So magnetos to both, and then on to start, and hold it on start. And engine is running. So we'll put the avionics master switch on, turn the inverter on, and we'll turn the nav lights to bright. And to get rid of this wind noise, we will go and close the canopy. So that will slide shut and lock itself and makes it a bit quieter in the cockpit. Not too much quieter, but a bit better. Okay, so just to reiterate just how good this cockpit looks, I'm going to turn head tracking on for a moment and have a look around. So just look at the quality of the instruments. It's like looking at a photograph, isn't it? It's absolutely stunning. So while we're here, let's just keep an eye on that oil temperature. So it is coming up, it's almost in the green now. Should we go and sit outside while it's here on the parking brake and give the engine a, a rev up? It's only just holding it on the parking brakes when we did that, so we'll be a little bit careful. I noticed they have put an animation on the nose boss. I'm not a huge fan of people doing that, but each to their own. Okay, we're at Kern Valley, by the way, if you hadn't recognized it already. So there's the coffee shop over there. <laughs> and we're gonna taxi off left. So we have got a co-pilot today by the look of it. I'm not sure when she jumped into the airplane. I didn't see her arrive. Okay, 
so I think we're almost ready let's go and taxi out shall we so it takes a fair amount of thrust on the propeller to get it rolling and we're rolling once you have got it rolling you can remove the thrust I think it's just those big soft tires take a little bit of encouragement to start moving so let's turn the head tracking off for a moment so we're just going to taxi down to the runway here at Kern Valley so if we press space using just the keyboard keys to position our head we stay just clear of the runway that's quite good to know and not uh, the ceiling not the runway what am I talking about So put head tracking back on momentarily just to help us taxi out to the runway. We're going to use the full runway. I have switched the, the weather off today. Uh, live weather had a 15 knot crosswind which is right on the limits of the aeroplane. And I, given that this is my first flight, I've not flown it before, I didn't want to tempt fate and have any sort of accident on the runway. So we've made life intentionally easy for ourselves in terms of wind. So we'll see how we get on. Oh well, we got the usual kamikaze vans are waiting for us at the runway on ramp. Okay, we'll avoid the vans. double back on ourself so I'm going to turn the head tracking off for a moment just see enough to see what we need to see in the cockpit so no flaps full throttle and we're holding a small amount of left stick or left rudder sorry to hold the center line reluctant to leave the ground it does come off eventually so gear up it's an interesting aircraft to control we appear to have a custom oh no it's the, it is the normal pilot avatar I thought that was a custom one there for a moment okay so we're heading out over um, Lake Isabel, is it? So you can see it's a really, really lovely aeroplane. So what's its climb performance like? If we have a look at the indicated airspeed. We've got RPM. We're maxing out the RPM at the moment. Should we pull that back a little bit? So I guess as long as it's in the yellow, it should be fine. So just coming up through 4,300 feet, climbing at 2,000 feet a minute without too much trouble at all, holding about 110 knots, 115 knots maybe. So should we turn head tracking on? So let's just centre it up. has this tinted cover overhead which is really really useful actually you don't get blinded when you're looking around I'm going to continue on climbing I want to do some stall tests in a moment to see how it gets on in the stall it's very very stable to fly that's something I can tell you straight away it was it seemed quite heavy it didn't want to come off the runway too easily but it does look interesting doesn't it with the tinted cover over our heads oh 
Okay. So we get it straight and level. Use the attitude indicator to do that. Pull the nose up. So this is under power. A 20 degree climb. We're losing airspeed. Goes to stall. Keep it level, keep it level. And the left wing drops. Just going to keep it held in. Let it dump. Pull it out. So, oh, look at that. It went to about 220 knots there in the dive. So we have the airspeed. We may as well do this now. So yeah, it does loops easily. It's a military trainer. It's built for high G. So I just pulled the throttle back a bit too far there, which causes a klaxon if you haven't got the gear down. Okay, let's have a look at the manifold pressure as well then. So you can pretty much leave it against the stops and it will be happy. What about roll performance? Yeah, it rolls on its axis, so it's very good in that regard. What about... Um, what about your induced by the ailerons? Let's come back across the lake and we'll have a go at that. We'll, we'll basically waggle the aeroplane, waggle the ailerons full deflection and see if the nose sways at all. So ready? No, look, it holds the direction it's going remarkably well. That's amazing, actually. That just means the ailerons are balanced, really. And sometimes you get the nose tipping around. That's the rudder, by the way. It's remarkably direct. Oh, and we can cause it to drop a wing with rudder. So if we push it... Interesting. So let's climb back up and do a full spin test, shall we? It's this military aircraft, we should be able to get it to have a think about spinning. So coming up towards 6,000 feet is very powerful. So we're going to get it into the stall and then we'll go left rudder hard. So just straighten it up on the attitude indicator. So here comes the store warning. It's not going to stall into that. What if we go that way? That way it will. OK, let's go back up. So it looks like it will spin right, but it looks like it will come straight back out of it as well. So we're just going to climb out and round. This part of the build looks so good, doesn't it? So we go off down the valley here a little way. Just coming back up to 6,000 feet. We'll go for another 7, 000, uh, another 1,000 feet up to 7,000 for this test. We'll need plenty of headroom to do a spin. Just going to drop the nose slightly to maintain the climb. It's very placid when it does get to stall. You get lots and lots of warning. Okay, we're coming up towards 7,000 feet, so let's increase the climb rate. Get it into the stall. If we let go, it straightens itself out, all on its own. Very, very quickly it straightened itself out. So you can't spin it, basically. You can if you induce the spin. But you have to hold it in the spin. As soon as you let go, it comes back out. So it's not really spinning at all. OK, 
Okay, let's fly back towards Kern Valley and we'll try some approaches, shall we? Let's have a look at this from outside. This is the first aeroplane where I think it's louder inside than it is on the outside. So I'm just going to check the volume of that to make sure you can hear me over it. Yeah, you can hear me over it, that's fine. Okay. So how fast will it go in a straight line? Let's max the engine. And let's watch the temperatures actually. If we push this all the way forwards and see if it does actually overheat the engine. I don't think it will. Okay, so it's Ken Valley, it's just appearing. Should we come in low through the hills? Where's the indicated airspeed? Okay, so 175 knots ish. Go and buzz the cafe. Okay, enough fooling around. Let's um, take this back out to this bluff over here. We'll turn around in the end of the valley. So we'll climb over the top of this bluff, do a right turn and come in for an approach. So gear down, flaps down, so I'm going to do a touch and go for the first one. Oh, it wanders around. As soon as it's on the ground, it starts to get a bit skittery. Okay, we didn't plant it on the ground there, but... It doesn't like being at 75% throttle at full flaps either. I don't know if you saw that. So gear up. See, I'm doing all this flight testing so you don't have to. Let's go back round and do that again and actually come in for a full stop this time. It's not gaining airspeed. Did we put the pito heat on? No, we didn't. But it is a hot day, so that shouldn't affect it. I'm just wondering if this is giving a true reflection of how fast we're actually going, because I've just put the throttle all the way forwards. We've got high RPM, we've got pretty good manifold pressure, 
and yet it didn't want to climb away. It's interesting. I mean, it is slowly picking up speed, look. But when we came off the runway, it didn't want to go past 50 or 60 knots. It was right on the edge of stalling. Maybe just with flaps and undercarriage, it is very draggy and doesn't quite have enough power to to deal with that. So we'll go out a bit further this time. Lose some speed around the corner. Gear down. Flaps down. Engine at idle. Let's see how the speed comes off. So we're going to have to put more power in. It takes a while for the engine to pick up. So that's 50% throttle and we are still losing speed. So yeah, I think it is just very draggy when it's got flaps and gear, which is why you normally wouldn't take off with flaps. I'm having to go out to 75% throttle. And it's slowly picking speed up even in the descent. But So just pull it back a little bit from that. It's OK, back to idle. brakes. Not quite going to make the exit. Flaps up. So, I don't believe, I, I don't know, the indicated airspeed didn't seem to match what we were seeing. It was it seemed to be reading a lot slower than we were going, but maybe that's an optical illusion just in the aircraft in general, I don't know. Obviously it was very controllable. Once you get used to the idea that once you've got the flaps and the gear down, you're going to be running at maybe 70% throttle to maintain approach speed. Once you get that down, it's actually very easy to look after. really noisy though. You may not hear quite as noisily as I am because I often tone down the engine for recording purposes so you can hear me over it, but believe me once you're in this in the simulator it's loud. Okay Another test flight successfully done without completely smashing the aeroplane to pieces. <laughs> What's the old saying? If you can reuse the aeroplane, you've done a good job. Or if you can walk away, you're successful. If you can reuse the aeroplane, that's a bonus. I think that's the old saying. Park on the end nearer the coffee shop, shall we? Okay, parking brake on, mixture pulled back, and that immediately kills the engine, and then we'll 
put the uh, magnetos to off, master avionics switch off, turn the inverters off, turn the alternator off, and how are we doing over here? Pito heat off, strobe off, nav lights to off, um, pull the propeller back. Famous last words. And battery off. And we should be able to open the cabin again and go and get that lovely cup of coffee. <laughs> so there we go. That was the CI Marchetti SF260 in Microsoft Flight Simulator from Sim Skunk Works. I really like it. It's a bit of a handful in certain flight regimes to fly. I'd love to see what it's like in a crosswind because it was quite skittery. When you remember when we did the touch and go, it was kind of bobbling around on the undercarriage. Um, so I, w I imagine it would be quite the handful in a crosswind. So I, but nothing that practice couldn't overcome, obviously. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching.